can't tell the story of jazz in America without also telling the story of jazz from Detroit. There are just too many musicians that have come from here that have made too big an impact. And the list of great musicians from here just goes on and on and on, all the way up into the present day. I don't think that Detroit jazz musicians have gotten their due as a group. Until you put all of these musicians together, you don't really realize how profound an impact that the city has had on the course of modern and contemporary jazz. And if you just look at the list of artists and you're a jazz fan, it's like, wow, all these guys are from Detroit? I mean, you can't pick up a record that was made on the East Coast between, say, 1955 and 1970 and not run into one, two, three, sometimes four or more uh, musicians that are from Detroit. I would look through the records and find out that, whoa, Donald Byrd is from Detroit. Oh, Tommy Flanagan, the great pianist, is from Detroit. Oh, wow, the Jones brothers, Alvin Jones, Hank Jones, and Thad Jones, and someone like Ron Carter, who is someone who has really been a mentor to me, probably the most recorded bass player in the history of jazz. This is right here from Ferndale. People don't realize the importance of Detroit jazz. You know, of course you've got New Orleans, you've got New York, but then there's Detroit. <laughs> you know, and it's just a little different. You know, it's a little different. The, expe the expectation is higher. When you say that you're from Detroit, they expect you to be a badass. Why is it that this town of all cities would have, because I mean, it's out the way. And why is it that it became the music center? And I was talking to some people today. Actually, I would say that when somebody one of these days sit down and write the history, they will find out that this town has produced more talent and musicians than any other city in America on a one-to-one -one basis. Now, when you, you got more people that come out of Detroit that are in the music entertainment field than any place in the world. Uh, jazz is an expression of African American culture. By 1950, 300,000 or so African Americans are living in Detroit. It's about 16% of the population. You have to remember, in Detroit, in the middle of the 20th century, in 1950, we're the fifth largest city in the country with 1.85 million people. Afro Americans coming from the South, you know, it was running from them fields. <laughs> oh, this we can work the factory. That's a that's oh, that's like heaven, you know. And they're getting a, a study a paycheck, and the paycheck was after a while became uh, really substantial. So this became like uh, one of the first middle classes, you know. It was built from the from the auto industry, being they had good insurance, good pensions. They couldn't do any wrong. <laughs> The center of black life in Detroit in those days was Paradise Valley. There were scores of restaurants, clubs, hotels, providing opportunities for live music and for musicians to make a living. And, you know, musicians could work here and stay here and thrive here. And those neighborhoods, uh, just walking down the street, you could hear blues and jazz seeping out of windows, this sort of thick haze of blues and swing just kind of would settle on street corners. There was classical music in the community, uh, gospel music in the community. Detroit was a center for all kinds of musical activity. You can't underestimate the way in which this the culture was saturated with music. Jazz is an expression of all of that. These places were significant in that it created a space for the African American community, for musicians, for doctors, for lawyers, for families. This was a place that was ours, something that was near and dear to the hearts of people. It was a domain. The name musicians were working around here. I'm talking about like Charlie Parker, John Coltrane, and, and those, those, they would live in Detroit and would go to New York to record and then come back in and work, work, work the region. The Bluebird is where Dizzy Gillespie and Miles Davis and others would come to play in the late 1940s, and they'd play with the local talent who kept up with them, in fact, inspired them. And, you know, they brought this energy 